So got to work on that this morning. Good morning. We are live. Good morning. Today is Monday. Oh, good morning, coaches. Welcome to the National Wake Up Call. <laughs> Today is Monday, November 19th. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is Thanksgiving week in the U.S., so you know it takes us a whole week to get ready for the big day on Thursday, cooking and cleaning and whatever you're doing. So um, if you are going out and shopping for ingredients, uh, do me a favor and buy a gift card for a firefighter or a teacher or, you know, do a give back this week. So buy a little more today if you are um, in the giving back mode. I just um, am feeling it. That's my PSA for this morning. So buy one more. Um, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving week. We've got a lot to be grateful for. Um, and I'm going to award a prize to somebody who played in last week's contest. The question was, name our very own ingredient hunter who travels the world researching ingredients for Shakeology and has never compromised on quality and integrity. And that answer is Darren Olean. So um, if you uh, played in the contest last week, we took the first correct answer. And that was an Emerald coach from Welland, Ontario, Canada, Kelly Slingerland. Congratulations. Now, if you want to play in today's contest, I'm going to um, give a question. And if you're new to the call, just type your answer right here on Facebook on the live portion of the call. Here we go. Here's the question. And you may get something from our prize closet in Utah. Here we go. Question is, To Be Mindset is one of the programs that we've got $20 off this month in our promo. Tell me what To Be stands for in To Be Mindset. And I need the whole thing, what it stands for and what it means. So To Be Mindset, what does the To Be stand for? So that's it. That's it for the contest. And we're now ready for the top of the hour and the top of the call. Good morning, coaches. This is your wake-up call. Good morning. I'm Sandy Buadana, and today is Monday, November 19th. I've got a few announcements for the week. Let me share them with you on my screen. And here we go, everybody. Number one. Can you see me, Jeff? Just, I mean, can you see these, Jeff? Just making sure that it took. Yes, can okay. see them just fine. We are in no excuse November. That does not mean you don't shave your beard this month. It means that we've got time. There's time to take advantage of our biggest sale of the year. The challenge and completion packs, which costs $150 or more, are right now $20 off until the end of this month. So that FAQ is 4534. You definitely want uh, to have your customers experience our combination combination of nutrition, fitness, and support and get ahead of the holidays. So that is no excuse. November, it keeps going on until the end. Transform 20, get ready for the launch of Transform 20, which is coming December 4th. We've got a product training guide and other resources that'll be added to the coach office later today. So look for those tools and don't miss the training on the Beachbody Champions Facebook page at 10 a.m. today. That is today. Okay. Um, remember to reserve your 20, Transform 20 step available while supplies last. And to qualify, all you have to do is earn at least a Success Club point this month. And to guarantee your step, uh, purchase any Transform 20 offer that includes a step between December 4th and December 11th. So third announcement for today is Black Friday and Cyber Monday. We should call it Black Friday week because it's kicking off tomorrow at 10 a.m. That sale kicks off tomorrow. We've got up to 70% off on gear, fitness kits, apparel, and more at teambeachbody.com. If you want to preview the list of sale items, you can go to that FAQ 4254. The sale ends November 26th, so take advantage of that now. Head over to teambeachbody.com and shop now. So let me come back and introduce, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, our president of global sales, Jeff Hill. 
Sandy, you are a little subdued this morning. <clears throat> What is it? I mean, I, you're just getting, there you go. I like it when you kind of shake and bake it a little bit in the morning. <laughs> this is a wake up call, Sandy. It, so if it was to, a wake up call for me. My password <clears throat> wouldn't get into Zoom. So I got it just in the nick of time. So go and have a good call. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for getting us started. And as she shared, it is Thanksgiving week here in the United States. And I hope everybody is gearing up to have a great week. And, and as Sandy said, take a few moments to not even even more than a few moments take a long time this week and all the frenetic stuff of getting ready for Thanksgiving to sit back and truly think about, man, what am I grateful for? You know, what are the things in my life? And it's always interesting. You do that and good things seem to come your way. You become more aware of those around you, the blessings in your life. And um, man, if we're not taking time to, to, to think about those things and we're missing some of the goodness and the richness of life. So um, please, please do that. But coaches, this is your wake up call. And I hope one of the things I'm sure at the top of your list that you're grateful for is the opportunity to join this call every Monday morning, right? Or whenever you listen to it, to get fed, to get to learn something new about our business. And uh, today we're going to have an absolutely great call with Emily. I can't wait for us to get to that content. So you need to have your pens out. You need to have or whatever you're capturing nuggets on. You need to be ready to go because this call is going to be absolutely full of nuggets and nuggets that that you can put into place this week and in anticipation of our Transform 20 launch. This is what this call is about. So I hope I'm building up a little bit of excitement for it, but let's get on to who has moved their business for this week with none other than The Voice, Mr. Darren Ashby. Darren, take it away. Thank you, Jeff. Good morning and good morning, coaches. All right, we got a lot of stuff today to get to, so we're gonna jump right into recognition. Here we go. I'm going to stop my video. There we go. All right. Starting with our newest diamond coaches. Here they are. Congratulations to Tanner Anderson, Bo Beggett, Brian Barbeglia, Kayla Barker, Matthew Bartholomew. Next two from Canada, Jocelyn Bedard and Sandra Bedard, Kayla Bell, Sherry Bethman from Canada, Annick Blaise, Sierra Lukowicz, um, Hannah Bowerman in a secondary CBC, Melissa Brewer, Paul Bryant in a secondary CBC, Abby Burgess. Haley Castellano, the next two from Canada, Natalie Chabot, Elizabeth Chevrier, and a secondary CBC, Christy Kauzar from Canada, Josie Doust, Amber Davis, Becky Dempsey from Canada, Marie-Pierre Deslarez, Emily Dubois, Sue Dupuis, Sarah Eicher, Danielle Enrique Vengochia, Candace Feldman, Danny Fergman, Nathan Fleming, Ann Gerton, Chad Graybill from Canada, Yann Grenier in a secondary CBC, Kelly Guy, Sarah Hale, Amanda Hendrickson, Meredith, Hent uh, Meredith Hent Hentges, Douglas Holland, Brandon James, Taryn Johnston from Canada, Al Alexandra Jolly, Jessica Kirschman, Molly Koch, Nina Kohler, Catherine Lendicker, Amy Limehouse Eager, Chad Lockhart, Becky Luna, Tyson Marlowe, Laura Melgar, Kelly Mitchell, Jennifer Moore in a secondary CBC, Megan Mozakowski, Aaron Newberry in a secondary CBC, Jessica Oliva, Brandy Priest, Bridgette Pigeot, Rianne Reed, Will Richardson, Megan Riley, Carol Schneider from Canada, Margaret Scrimgor, Paul Shields, Haley Smith, Ashley Steckler, Amy Still, Eric uh, Tarnas, Lindsay Van Leuven, Sherry Vandershoot, Janelle Walter, Kenneth Weaver, Amanda Yardley, and James Yonushonis. Wow, what a great group of diamonds. Congratulations, guys. Way to go. Now, our newest star diamond coaches, the top one from Canada. The first one, however, <laughs> not top one. Manning Campodas, Ellen Gentile, Holly Hay Haynes, and a secondary CBC, Brianna Headley. Marta Herrera, Maria Jackson, Valerie Macko, Camille Maley, and from Canada, Aliyah Vischer. Now our newest two-star diamond coaches. Congratulations to Clara Crutchfield, Danae Hayes in a secondary CBC, Dara Laporta, and Megan Morrison. And coaches, our newest three-star diamond coaches. Here they are from Canada, Maud Blaise Houtkar, Kelly Calabrese, Courtney Dunker, and Spencer Smith. Now we have a new four-star diamond coach this week. That would be Brittany Crosby. Congratulations, Brittany. 
and jumping to five star diamond coach we have a new five star and that would be Kristen Rowe also coaches this week a new seven star diamond coach congratulations to Sammy Glonek all right that is it for new ranks this week now on the top success club point earners for the week and on top of that list congratulations to Melissa St. Laurent Ashley Molstad, Angie Belmar, Ashley Smith, and Karine Perry. All right, coaches, that is it for another week of Rank Advancements. Congratulations to everyone, and don't ever forget to be thankful and to make it a fantastic week. Back to you, Jeff. All right, Darren, and it's always good to see that celestial glow on your head. I don't know what about it is. We need to do some more powdering as we get going, but I understand that later this week, at least here in Utah, uh, we're going to have a little snow. So unlike the sun we're having now, winter is upon us, which is, which is a good thing. We need the water, right? So, hey, you know, just one other thing. Is I, what I'll do is I'll watch, obviously, what's happening here on the screen, but I'll also watch on Facebook to see you know, who's watching on this call. And one of the things that... Uh, I think is a great indicator learning for all new coaches is that I'll, I'll see these names of some of our most seasoned veteran experienced coaches that will be on this call paying attention. I just looked at some names. I saw Alyssa Shoemakers, Janelle Summers, uh, Lauren, Lauren Duke, Angie Belmar, just to name a few that just popped across there. These are like 15 star diamond coaches that have been in the business for a long time. And what are they doing on the Monday morning? They are paying attention to the national wake up call, learning from whoever is on this call, because there might be a nugget or two that they can put into practice in their business that can help them get better or to share with others. So if you want to see when we talk about success leaves clues, um, being part of this call learning is one of those clues. The curiosity that drives creativity that can be led into results is, is great. So anyway, let's get into this call. Excited to have a seven star diamond uh, individual who's been in the business for just a little over four years three times elite coach, uh, a success club all-star legend, all the way from Wilmot, Illinois, Emily Skender. So Emily, are you on the call with us? I am. I'm here, Jeff. Are you ready to rock and roll? I am so excited for this. I've been waiting for this for four years. <laughs> for four years. I'm ready to watch myself for four years. Well, anyway, <laughs> we're excited to have you on the call and congratulations on really what has been four years of doing some pretty significant things in this, in this business. Thank and, you so uh, you know, much. And it's kind of fun, you know, I get to read the, your, if you will, your biography a little, you know, some of the things that you've done beforehand. And it's always great to see where people come from and what they've been able to accomplish. And, you know, a lot of times we'll have coaches that will come into our Utah offices and they'll, they'll say, you know, what are the secrets to success? You know, tell us what the, you know, give us a peek behind the curtain of what's that one thing. And it's, and it's, you know, it's usually just, you have good people who hang in there, continue to develop their business. And honestly, it's developed over three to four years. You have to be patient with this business and learning the skill sets. And so, yes, it's four years and here you are. So we're the proof in the pudding that um, you've been successful before then. But why don't you introduce yourself a little bit to everybody and tell them how you became a Beachbody coach? Yeah. So it's crazy because five years ago, I never would have imagined I would end up working in fitness. I really got brought into Beachbody because I needed a solution for my own fitness problems. So from the time I was 17 to 21, I'd put on about 50 pounds in my college years. And that left me feeling really, really crappy for a long time. And eventually I felt bad enough to go and find a solution. And at the time, I mean, this was 2014, there was a program coming out. It was called P90X3. And it was the first time I'd really ever heard that fitness could be 30 minutes. And for me, that was so doable that it finally gave me the nudge to actually jump and commit. And so I did P90X3 with my husband. We did two rounds. I lost 50 pounds. Together, we lost 80 pounds. And we just became Beachbody diehards. I wasn't a coach yet. I didn't even honestly really understand that, that coaching existed. Um, but we ended up doing Body Beast after that. And finally, I was really introduced to the idea that 
I could actually be a coach and I could be good at this. And I think more than anything, I wanted to help other women really regain their confidence because that was something I was lacking for so many years. But I was also really struggling in school at the same time. So I was a super senior in college. It's not impressive. I was double majoring in finance and insurance, and I hated them both so much. But I was kind of forced that normal route by, you know, just outside forces. And um, I would just sit in class and think, like, this isn't where I'm meant to be. And the payoff for me of that cubicle nine to five job was so unappealing. And so when I finally saw this opportunity to create something for myself, I mean, it was like all the pieces just clicked. And so I dove right in. I was one of those people that didn't need a lot of convincing about coaching. I heard about it. I met my coach and it just was like the stars aligned. And I was like, sign me up. Um, I was everybody's dream sign up in that sense, but it's been a crazy journey ever since. And I was really looking for like a total life transformation at that point. And I was only 22 years old. Well, I mean, that's a fun story. I'm sure there's lots of people that are your age that are probably who also have been super seniors or who are super seniors right now in, in school. Um, but, but the truth is, is you also saw something. You jumped into a program. And as you said, you got into the program. You got results. Your husband got results you know, on this. And that developed confidence and, and self-belief. And, you know, one of the biggest questions that our coaches always have is, I, I don't have belief in myself. How do I get that? How do I get enough to really jump into this business? And, and guys, one of the answers we hear again and again and again is just that, is get into a program, press play, complete a program to show that you're disciplined enough to do that. And you've got the story then to tell and a story to share with, with other people. So, Emily, you just said I got, you know, I was one of one of those, maybe the golden coaches that came in. People wanted me because I was so excited about this and I, everybody wants people like you for sure. But then you had to do something with it, right? So what was the piece that got you kind of going and uh, where your business started to take off? So I was really excited. I mean, I think like all of us, but I had absolutely zero business experience. I had no social media presence. I was really starting from ground zero, like most of us are, right? And so I started coaching because I wanted to become that connective tissue that showed other people that they could take a wellness journey by my side with these tools and they could actually accomplish their goals. But I was so excited about the programs themselves that I started just attacking people with beach body spam. And I think we all are guilty of this at one point or another. If somebody w did want to actually talk to me about a program or whatever you saw from me on social media, I mean, it was just as beach body as it possibly gets, which isn't necessarily a bad thing to have that passion and real genuine excitement behind the programs, but it wasn't working for me. And I was just feeling like I was putting in all of this work and my messaging wasn't clicking. And I was so passionate about these programs, but I couldn't get other people to see and understand that. And so what I found to be true pretty quickly was that people weren't nearly as interested in the logistics and the facts about the program and the company itself. They were way more curious about my actual experience and story using the program. And so I started to really highlight that primarily on social media. That was the force in my business. So I started to kind of figure out through all of these conversations, because when we're asking somebody to take on fitness with us or business with us, that's a really big commitment. It's life-changing. And when we decide to do something life-changing, it's typically because we feel emotionally compelled to do so, not necessarily factually. When I got started on my fitness journey, it was because I saw what was possible through these other coaches sharing their stories and their transformations and making it feel real for me. And it was the same thing with the coaching opportunity when it was very just, it seemed human. It seemed like something a normal girl who had been struggling could do. That's when I decided to go all in. I had seen programs all throughout the years where I was struggling with my weight, but I was never prompted to actually commit and make a change until I felt in my heart, like this is the solution for me. If that person can do this, I can do it too. They're no different from me. So I started to really realize the programs are incredible tools. We all know that. We love them. We understand that everything that gets added to our little arsenal is fantastic. But it's us that brings the programs to life. It's the coaches. And I think that's what's so special about the businesses that we get to run. So it's important that we highlight us 
almost ahead of the program itself. That's the tool, but we are the force that really helps other people realize that this is something that they can actually do. So when I'm in the process of getting my audience emotionally committed to a new program launch, I'm pretty much trying to humanize the program and almost give it a voice and a narrative so that it's extremely evident to my ideal audience that this is a solution that can help them overcome the struggles in their life that they're facing right now because it's helping me overcome my struggles. And to do that, to really tap into this emotional connection and put together a game plan for a launch of a program or anything that I'm really putting out there for my business, I have a five-step process that I'm going to share with you guys today. So step one, especially with a new program that we're introducing to people, is to get really well rooted in your own emotional connection and need for the program. So I really start to think, how is this going to serve me and my life? Why am I so excited about this? So I have four questions that I ask myself and you guys, I am a pen to paper girl. I will literally write down the answers to these questions so that I can do a little bit of soul searching so that I can start forming fantastic stories to share online. So number one, why why is this routine going to be a game changer for me? Number two, what void in my life is this filling that I'm currently missing? Number three, why have I been looking for something like this? And number four, what will this do for my life and fitness? How is life going to look different because I have this tool in my world? And I really try to dig deep with these answers. I think it can be so easy to just go surface level with all of this. And it can be a little bit scary to almost face our biggest struggles and what we're really needing and to share that out in the world. I can remember being a brand new coach and just sitting there looking at the caption on one of my posts and being terrified to actually press enter and post it. But it's the deep answers that other people actually can connect with. Surface level doesn't speak to anybody. So I'm trying to tap into my audience's emotional brain, but to do that, I need to tap into my own first and really understand and personally believe in the program and what changes it's going to create in my life so that I can start to market that with success to my audience. But after I kind of figure out why I'm so excited about this, I need to understand why my audience is going to be so excited about this too, and what their struggles are and what their needs are, and how I can kind of fill those holes in their life with the solution that we have. So I think about my current life phase for sure, what's going on in my world, where I'm at in life, and then I relate it to other people who are just like me, and that's my target audience. And I can remember being new and I'm not really grasping my target audience or a niche, you know, you're kind of like putting this avatar together of who your ideal client is. And I was overthinking it when really it was just taking a look in the mirror and seeing what's going on in my world. What am I struggling with? Because other people who are going to understand that they're just like me. So for example, when I got started in my business, I was 22, I was still in college, um, and my goals with fitness were mostly aesthetic. I wanted to look good for a vacation coming up. I wanted to make my fitness fit into a heavy class schedule. I was commuting to school, so I was eating healthy meals on the go a lot. So I was really speaking to that younger demographic who was looking for a very similar solution to me. But now I'm 26. I'm newly married. I am pregnant for the first time. And so these two audiences, they're very different. Their needs, their struggles, their desires. So I have to speak to them differently. I have to be authentically me out loud so that they can understand that they need to be a part of my world and that they need the solution too. So now exercise nutrition, it's totally different in my world. You know, I'm training for me and my growing baby and my family and my audience has naturally shifted with me as I've kind of grown in my coaching business. So I consider other people who are just like me and their current life phase, and I start to think about things like their job and their life and their family and their needs and desires and day-to-day -day life. And then I really start thinking about from that, what are they probably struggling with? What do I struggle with? What are other things that other maybe newly married, middle 20s, starting a family people, what are they facing that's holding them back in their health, their fitness, their wellness, and their life? And I start to really put together the puzzle pieces for them about how this program could solve those problems. But I don't just speak this in a way like, this is your issue, here's how I can help you. I really try to position it as this is what I'm going through, this is what what I'm doing to overcome that problem. And because of that, they can start to see a little bit of themselves in me and they can see their problems 
also being solved by the exact same solution. And I really started to find when I did this really well online and in my messaging, my constant messaging, you guys, on Instagram, on Facebook, in my stories and emails, I faced a lot less objections because people weren't objecting the program, right? They were wanting to be a part of something that I was a part of. They wanted to be a part of an experience. It felt less like a transaction and more like something that they did not want to miss out on. So step three of this process, after you've figured out why you're so emotionally excited about this, the struggles and needs that your audience is facing and the, the solution really that they're looking for, I start to do research on the program itself. And there's so many ways that you can find this information. So a couple of things I like to do is research the FAQ. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever like really dove deep into the Beachbody FAQ. I'm a nerd for it. There are so many answers in there, um, but you can even creep the super trainers, social media pages. They talk a lot about what they're creating. The Coach Online Office, we have product launch tools. So I'm really just trying to get a good feel and understanding of what this program is, because if I can speak confidently about it to other people, the program itself, my confidence can rub off on them and it can really help them believe in their own ability to succeed in a journey with this program. I know the biggest objection that I actually get is even if they don't say this is what it is, it's that they're facing self-limiting beliefs. They're worried they're not going to succeed. And I know that because I've been that girl, right? For years, I was unhappy with my body and I would try things here and there and I would fail time and time again until I finally had this complete solution that we have to offer with the fitness and the meal plan. And it's just like results served to you on a silver platter, right? And so when I can breathe that confidence into them, it allows them to feel confident in themselves so that they can actually take that jump and just rip the bandaid off and commit to their own fitness journey. So I want you to think about that when you are facing objections, whether they're money, whether they're time, whatever you might hear, I find more often than not the actual stem of that objection is they're nervous they're not going to succeed and they need some confidence really just breathed into their life. So some selling points for Transform 20 just right from the online office would be the fact that they're 20 minute workouts, right? Hopefully we've gotten that much out of this. They use minimal equipment. You're not giving up results for efficiency. So it's not like you're getting 60% of the results you could get with max 30. You're still getting those crazy results. You're just working a little bit smarter. And so I started to think, okay, how does this specifically relate to my market? So for my life, I just got married. Like I told you guys, we moved to Chicago. I'm 16 weeks pregnant right now. 20 minute workouts have been a lifesaver for me. I was lucky enough to be a part of the test group, but even if I weren't, they would be a lifesaver for me moving forward as we move forward with this launch in December and January. So I can actually manage to make time for those even when life is crazy, even when I'm feeling exhausted. And this routine really allows me to get rid of that feeling of dreading my workouts. I think we've all been there because it feels like a really manageable commitment. It feels like a minimal commitment, honestly. And to be able to do it in my living room, it is Chicago. It is almost winter. Winter is upon us. And so not having to go out in the world while I'm tired and I am not always feeling it and I don't have off days being pregnant, it has made fitness so doable for me. It took out all of the excuses and I'm actually having fun with my fitness, which I think for me is the game changer because I'm a health coach and I will admit this, that is not 100% fitness obsessed. I do not leave, live and breathe fitness. I love the life that it creates for me. I love not feeling like I have to live, live like the sidelines of my own life. I love feeling like I can go out and do anything that I want in the world, but it's not necessarily putting in hours of workouts that actually lights up my fire. So in and out workouts, they're my jam. They get me back to spending more time with my family and living a life that's really full. And my audience values those exact same things. So I'm not speaking to maybe the person who wants to lift for two hours a day. If that's your jam, by all means, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think we've found a better way. And so I need to speak that truth every single day. 
Now, step four, I start breadcrumbing this story daily on social media. And if you've never heard this kind of uh, terminology of breadcrumbing, it's just putting little pieces of your story out there every day. You don't have to give them everything all at once. So like in step one, I told you I have those four questions I answer for myself, and then I've figured out my audience's struggles. From that, I start piecing together these little stories that I can share that make it very personal. It makes it very human. I'm not just sharing the Transform 20 stock image or the video highlight about what the program is. I'm sharing my life and why I'm so excited about this solution. So I think like a lot of people, I used to get really nervous that I would overshare or that I would annoy people on social media that I would share too often, that I would show up in their feed and they would get annoyed and unfriend me. I can tell you guys from experience, that hardly ever happens. I really started to realize that it is so hard to even get your content seen on social media these days, which is not an excuse. It is not something that is like unique to us as coaches. It's just the world. We've been given this really incredible tool. It just means that we have to level up our efforts and our consistency so that we can be the ones that stand out. So that means I need to show up every single day online because when somebody is ready to commit, I want it to be with me. I want to be that constant for them that's showing up in their feed, that's speaking their truth, that's really just addressing their own struggles and showing them what's possible, showing them what commitment looks like so that they decide, I want fitness. I'm going to message my girl, Emily, because I know she can help me. And you're going to be able to create that too. I'm trying to make myself stand out of the crowd because I realized we all have the same toolbox. And Honestly, I think our toolbox is the best toolbox around, but fitness and eating well, it's existed forever. The special ingredient about us is us. It's me. It's you, right? And so people can have all the right tools in front of them, but without the proper guide showing up for them consistently, they might never take a step forward. I don't know if I would have taken a step forward without hearing all of the stories that I did that finally made me realize, okay, I've got to do this. I've got to be a part of that transformation. So I'm sharing my own personal stories and excitement, not sales pitches and logistics. And I know this is really just a small tweak, but it's oftentimes not that we need to totally change up our business. It's a two millimeter change that we need to make that can make everything click for us. So I have a couple examples of how I breadcrumb. Now in an actual post, I might go a little bit more in depth for the sake of timing. I have three examples for you guys. So Transform 20 came into my life during my first trimester when I was struggling with constant fatigue and getting off the couch for a 30 to 45 minute workout was exhausting to even think about, honestly, <laughs> but 20 minutes made it mentally and physically manageable for me. Number two, I've been traveling a lot throughout this program and being able to press play in my hotel room for 20 minutes with no equipment made things excuse proof. I stayed on track in Vegas and if I can stay on track on vacation, you can absolutely work this into your life too. Number three, I used to get so bored with my workouts because it felt repetitive. I felt like I was doing the same routine over and over again, and I was facing that workout burnout. But having fresh workouts every single day, it's really brought the excitement back to exercise for me. And if I'm actually excited to get up and press play every morning, that's a fantastic place to be. That's when I can get results and hold on to them forever because I'm not finding myself frustrated with with my fitness journey. And so step five kind of ties all of this together. And this is where I start to utilize curiosity marketing to prompt people who do feel emotionally connected with me to reach out and ask for more information. Now I did say people who do feel emotionally connected to me because not everybody's going to. That's okay. I don't need to appeal to everybody. If I'm trying to, which I think I tried to in the beginning of my business, and I just found that nobody felt this deep bond with me where they were just willing to jump, right? Like I was so excited. I wanted people to take on this life with me and nobody was excited as I was because they didn't really understand who I was. So it's okay to not attract everybody into your life, but the people who are attracted in are going to love this approach 
approach so much more than the really upfront salesy posts that we sometimes see on Facebook and Instagram. So we're bound to have tens of thousands of posts clogging up the feed about Transform 20. And I really started to think, okay, how do I get my posts seen? How do I get people working with me? I have to create intrigue. And so instead of name dropping the program or the company, which I never really do, I explain the routine. I explain my excitement. If I have a workout that day, I'm never titling it. I just did upper fix extreme, right? I'm explaining that I just worked my upper body and sharing maybe how much stronger I got from the week before or why I love this routine so much because the words transform 20, they might not mean anything to my audience yet. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they literally don't mean anything to my audience yet. But if I explain that they can totally transform their bodies in 20 minutes with cardio, with body weight exercises, minimal equipment in their living room, they can wrap their minds around that. Beach body jargon is white noise to people who aren't already in our world. And if they don't understand how much I really care about helping them in my challenge group and helping them see results, most of the time they just won't listen if they feel like they're being sold to. So their guard, I find, goes up immediately when my audience feels like I'm pitching them in my posts versus just sharing what I'm using, what I'm loving, and what I'm really valuing. And I kind of always think back to it like, okay, when a good friend suggests a movie to me or a book or a restaurant, I trust their opinion. I value it. I don't think twice about it. I won't even Google and check reviews, right? Like I'm like, all right, girl, I'm going there. But the same thing can happen with our businesses in the exact same way. What I'm trying to do every single day and beyond is just share my story and my experiences and my excitement so authentically that people feel like I am their fit best friend that has been long lost that they have been waiting for before we even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And when we do have that one-on-one -on -one conversation, because I've built up that know, like, and trust factor, I face a lot less of that, well, I don't know if I'm ready to commit. Well, I don't know, X, Y, Z, because I've already shared all of the wells in my life, right? Well, I was really busy, but I found a solution that fit into that. Well, I'm really tired, but that isn't an excuse for me anymore. Well, healthy eating used to be hard, but we have these perfect, easy to follow meal plans. So they trust me because I've let them in and I've shared my struggles. And more importantly, I'm sharing how I'm overcoming those struggles. So when I do have something new going on in my world, they're excited about it. They want in on it and your audience is going to win in on it too. Uh, let me just say, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just watching the, the, the comments here and uh, probably one of the easiest national wake up calls ever just to listen to you lay those pieces out. And the one question that everybody's asking is how do you get your kitchen bar so clean? Does it always look that way? <laughs> My husband. <laughs> your husband, fantastic <laughs> delegation. That's such a great thing to do. No, seriously, this was an absolutely phenomenal call, Emily. And I just, you know, as, as I look at these steps that you've written down and, and coaches, if you step back right now and think transform 20, she has laid out the perfect game plan for you to have an incredibly successful launch with this. You know, she starts out with, I'm just gonna re, just repeat these quickly, but people will go back as her step one was, how do you get people, root, how do I get myself rooted in my own, create my own emotional connection you know, with this program? And then she laid that out too. Then I try to understand my audience and what their struggles are so you can apply those to those. And then three, really research the program, go into the FAQs, creep on the, the you know, on, on Sean on this. So you see how he feels, you know, so he feels about that program. You know, then number four was, you know, start breadcrumbing the story, start laying out some of those pieces for people. So they want to be part of that. And then for the creating the curiosity marketing that gets people coming to you to want to do more with this program. And here's, and here's really the connective tissue uh, as Emily started out with this is between the you and them is it's your personal story. As she said, social media is going to be crowded space. Lots of people, 20,000 other coaches are going to be talking about Transform 20. The people that are going to be successful are the people that are relatable, the people that have a story about this and can back that up with knowledge and facts and understand their audience. It's, it's going from just snorkeling along the surface to doing a little bit of scuba diving with this program and making it, making it yours. Think about who you would want to do business with. That's the person that you would want to do 
business with. So uh, Emily, absolutely uh, a, a phenomenal call. Thank and, you. Uh, it, and it's going to be one I think that's just watched and watched and watched and watched and listened to and learned from. So thank you so much. Now, you. you always know there's the one last question. You've been in Beachbody for four years. Uh, you shared a little bit about the before story. Let's talk a little bit about the present story. I mean, life is crazy, you guys. It really is. And all of it is worked for, but I think that's so empowering to know because when I heard that however hard I worked would be the ways that I would see life change, I was like, challenge accepted. Like, let's go. I want to create massive change in my life. When I started this business, I lived in my mom's basement. I was 22. I was broke. I had just gotten my fitness under control, but nothing else in my life was. Thinking about five years in the future was terrifying. And it kind of makes me laugh now because I'm now living five years in the future and it all turned out okay. But I went from struggling in school to now running a successful business. I mean, I was able to quit my job at 23 years old, which I think is pretty cool, but I've been able to help other people do that too. There's nothing special about what's going on in there. And I think too, especially now more than ever, I might just be hormonal and emotional, but being pregnant with our first child and not having to worry about being out of the house and taking maternity leave and childcare and getting to be there for every moment. The fact that I made that choice at 22 unknowingly, I think it's absolutely wild. And the fact that we have such an amazing company that gets to make that happen. Like I, I loved it and I believed in it 100% the day that I started coaching. And ever since then, I mean, my love has only multiplied for what we get to do. It's a gift. It really, really is. Everything is different. I mean, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, Sandy sent me this, just shot a text over to me, says, it's kind of hard not to smile, isn't it? Watching, watching Emily on this, her enthusiasm. <laughs> but you know, it's not just the enthusiasm, it's the content behind the enthusiasm. And, uh, and then it's, it's putting it all to action uh, as you've done. So Emily, Thank you so much for being so immaculately prepared uh, for this call and delivering some absolutely phenomenal content. And uh, no surprise that you're enjoying this success that you're enjoying. So thank you so much and have a great Thanksgiving week. Thank you, you too. All right, will do. You know, as, as Emily was talking and I was listening to her, I quickly pulled up this quote that just made me think of her and it's by Maya Angelou. And she said this, you can only truly become accomplished at something that you love. Don't make money your goal. And, and to get this next part, instead, pursue the things you love doing and then do them so well that people can't take their eyes off of you. Let me repeat that. Then do them so well that people can't take their eyes off of you. I, I just think as you're watching this call right here, you couldn't take your eyes off of Emily because she is doing some things so well. But coaches, um, if you want to be successful at this business, yes, you have to put your head down. You have to go to work. You have to learn the skills and you have to learn by trial and error. But the great part about our culture is we have people like Emily that are willing to have an abundance mentality and share what their best practices uh, have been. But then the ball gets lobbed over to you on Monday morning to say, what am I going to do with it? Where am I with my goals? Last week, I think I shared we had something like 45 days left uh, in, in the year. And with Thanksgiving and with Christmas, the holidays, it gets even shorter. What are you going to do? What can you do over this next three days before Thanksgiving to take what Emily shared and put into practice. It comes in the inviting and in becoming the connective tissue as she shared. Are you the connective tissue? And what that means is you have to connect. And the only way you can connect is by having your own story, by knowing who your audience is, and then working with them to really create results. This is a phenomenal business, guys. We are about changing people's lives. No, no, let me say it again. We are about changing people's lives. Truly, that's what we do. And as she said, and it's a great way to end, you as a coach are the, or as a, the coach, you are the connective tissue. So thank you for doing that. Have a great Thanksgiving week. Let's make the few days before Thanksgiving really count by helping people. So Sandy, toss it back over to you. Thanks, everybody. You know what? This this show sometimes is like the voice. You know, you really don't know what's going to come out. You really don't know what people are going to look like. But when it's so much joy, it, it, it just is, is so rewarding. So I have 
a uh, practice happiness is the uh, card for today, the affirmation practice happiness, because like uh, Jeff said, it just attracts people to your joy. So with that, have a very happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.